One of the constant things about grain growing is the quest for greater productivity. And while that might seem to be slow at times, it's incredible to look back over the past 20 years and see how far we've come. Harvest 2009, the 20th since Australian grain growers got their own National Research and Development Organisation. Every year there may be subtle changes to the way producers grow a crop, but it's not until you look back across those two decades as a whole that you see how far we've come. For Charlie Boyle in the central Western Australian wheat belt, a couple of changes in particular stand out as having raised productivity. The adoption of no-till has, has been, it's been massive and it, it's 100% it's, you know, adoption really in WA now. Uh, so that, that step there, which was back in the mid 90s, I think was probably, that was, that was the biggest one of the lot. More recently, it's been a big push toward varieties and increasing the production out of the genetics that we're using. It's safe to say that grain growers' success in adopting a constant stream of new methods would have been much more modest without the industry's investment in R&D. For the past 20 years, producers have prioritised their R&D investment needs through the regional panels of the Grains Research and Development Corporation. And over the long term, the sector has done comparatively well. But in a very real sense, we're now at an important junction. For the past 30 years, grain producers have outperformed their counterparts in other broadacre agriculture in Australia in terms of how fast they've been able to increase their productivity. Well, in the past 10 years, that seems to have changed a bit. Now, you might say, well, that's because of the drought, and it's a fair bet that that's had a very big influence. But even when you massage the data to get rid of the drought as an influence, there's still an unexplained slowdown in how fast we're getting better at what we do. Now, the question is, why is that happening? But perhaps more importantly, where are the next great leaps forward going to come from? Those are questions that GRDC got Abare to pose to producers and farm consultants in a nationwide series of workshops as part of the Harvesting Productivity Initiative. Their answers will help guide GRDC's investment mix in the coming years. R&D has been a major contributor to productivity and what we want to do is make sure we're focusing the research and development efforts in those areas which will make the most difference in terms of productivity and profitability. The conclusions of the Harvesting Productivity workshops affirmed R&D's key role in raising productivity. So what kinds of research are the next giant leaps forward likely to come from? Well, an obvious candidate is gene technology. Its potential to more quickly deliver varieties that are drought tolerant in particular has massive implications for Australian growers. This GRDC-sponsored GM wheat being field tested near Canberra has had a gene turned off, making it more water efficient. It produces yields up to 25% higher. The GRDC-supported Wheat Genome Sequencing Project is lifting the shroud on every one of the tens of thousands of genes in the species. This will allow the scientists to unlock the secrets of much more complex traits that involve a combination of genes, things like yield. Yield is not just a single gene trait like insect resistance or herbicide resistance. Yield might have <clears throat> hundreds of genes involved in it. The genomics and the wheat genome project I think is going to help us uh, decipher what, which of those 30,000 genes are the 200 that are important in yield gain. So I think that is going to have an enormous impact on plant breeding for the future. Keeping the right balance in GRDC's mix of investments takes sober weighing up of the full range of research categories. That includes other exciting developments like precision ag using GPS and variable rate technology, as well as more traditional agronomic research areas. It could be, though, that there are still significant productivity gains to be made from the untapped potential right under our feet. Blue sky stuff's very important, but it's, it's also the case that there are substantial um, productivity increases to be had from uptake, uptake of existing technologies, things that currently exist. Producers are rational people, so the methods they've been slower to adopt are probably the more difficult ones to take on. 
GRDC's investment is already recognising the increasing need to bridge the extension gap. But could it be that greater investment in this area is actually where the next great leaps will come from? You've only got to drive down the road and uh, different farmers with exactly the same set of environmental conditions and soil constraints and whatever can, uh, there can be a yawning gap between the two crops either side of the fence and it's, it's purely the timing and the management decisions made by each individual. One thing is for certain, raising productivity has always been central to GRDC's pursuit of profitability for producers. It's the whole thing we exist for. It's about making sure Australian grain growers have that technology that they can remain competitive in the ever-changing national and global grains industry. The Harvesting Productivity Workshops have already provided valuable insight and ABEAR is using that to generate more quantitative conclusions about what drives productivity. But it'll be up to producers to judge how that should influence the GRDC's investment mix because they're in the driving seat of all three regional panels. So we have growers and researchers on those regional panels who identify issues so that we talk to growers, we talk to researchers, we talk to industry about what are the issues in, in each of the regions and translate those into research questions and then translate those into research programs and projects that address the, the issues and deliver results back to growers. To steal a phrase from Abraham Lincoln, it's investment of the growers, by the growers, for the growers.